Hey math students, time to look at a couple of special triangles today. Um, now we've seen that uh, usually when you want to find the sine or cosine or tangent or cosecant or secant or cotangent of, uh, of an angle, you use a calculator, okay? Um, but there are a couple of triangles though that allow us to find the sine, cosine, tangent and other functions uh, of particular angles and that's what I want to look at today. So let's start with that's that's my attempt at drawing an equilateral triangle. Okay, so what do we know about an equilateral triangle? We know that well, all the angles are congruent, and since they have to add up to 180, that means each of these angles is 60 degrees, right? And then the other thing we know is that all of the sides are, uh, are congruent as well. They have the same length. So let's, uh, <clears throat> just for my purposes, let's say that they're all two, two units, two units long. So that's our equilateral triangle. So now what I want to do is I want to draw a little uh, segment down here to cut it in half, okay? So now my triangle's been cut in half, and I'm just going to throw away the left half of this, and I'm going to keep the right half. Okay? So now what do we have? Well, now we have uh, a triangle who, let's see, I cut this angle in half, so now this is 60, this is now a right angle, and this is 30 degrees. This was originally the same length as this, but I cut it in half, so now this is one. So now we have to figure out what this side right here is. Well, Pythagorean theorem, right? We'll call it B for right now. And what we know is that one squared plus B squared equals two squared, which means one plus B squared is four, which means B squared is three, which means this is the square root of three. Okay, so we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and the sides are 1 and 2 and the square root of 3. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us something about the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent of 30 and 60 degrees. Uh, let's see. The sine of 30 degrees is going to be, that's opposite over hypotenuse, that's 1 half. And the cosine of 30 degrees is going to be, here's 30 degrees, it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, that's root 3 over 2. And the tangent of 30 degrees is, that's going to be opposite over adjacent, so that's 1 divided by the square root of 3, which we usually write as square root of 3 over 3. Okay. So we got our sine, cosine, and tangent of 30 degrees. Uh, let's keep going. Cosecant of 30 degrees is, it's going to be the reciprocal of the sine, so that's 2. The secant of 30 degrees is, that's the reciprocal of that, so that's square root of 3 over, no, it's 2 over the square root of 3, uh, which we generally write as, 2 root 3 over 3. And the cotangent of 30 degrees is going to be uh, the reciprocal of tangent, which is, remember the tangent was 1 over the square root of 3, so that means the cotangent is just square root of 3. Okay. So, uh, hmm. Now what about 60 degrees? Well, 60 degrees, I can get the sign of that by looking at opposite over hypotenuse, but remember 60 degrees is, uh, that's the, the complement, that's a complementary, complementary angle to 30 degrees. So basically what that means is the sine of 60 is going to be the same as, sorry, the sine of 30 is going to be the same as the cosine of 60. The cosine of 30 is going to be the same as the sine of 60. The tangent of 30 is going to be the same as the cotangent of 60. The cosecant of 30 is going to be the same as the secant of 60. 
the secant of 30 is going to be the same as the cosecant of 60. And the cotangent of 30 will be the same as the tangent of 60. So what that tells me is I have all six of my trigonometric functions of 30 and 60 degrees just from this one triangle. It's kind of cool. Now the other triangle. So this one gave us sine, cosine, tangent of 30 and 60 degrees. Our next one, uh, instead of starting with a, uh, an equilateral triangle, let's start with a square. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half. This time, each side is one unit long. And this time, I'm going to cut it in half this way. And again, I'm going to discard what I have up here. But first, before I do that, let's show that this is a 90 degree angle. This was a 90 degree angle, but then it got cut in half, so it's 45 degrees. And that's true also for this angle up here. And each of these sides is one, okay? So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the sine of 45 degrees is, here we go, 45 degrees. It's going to be 1 over, oh, I need a hypotenuse. Okay, I can do this. Pythagorean theorem says 1 squared plus 1 squared is this thing squared. Well, 1 squared plus 1 squared is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So that means this has to be the square root of 2. So the sine of 45 degrees, 1 divided by root 2, which we usually write as root 2 over 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is going to be, huh, same thing. 1 divided by square root of 2, because this time it's adjacent over hypotenuse, or we could go from this angle, adjacent over hypotenuse. So also, square root of 2 over 2. The tangent of 45 degrees is, uh, that's going to be opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over 1, which is just 1. Also remember the tangent is sine over cosine. If the sine and cosine are the same, anything over itself is 1. The cosecant of 45 degrees is going to be the reciprocal of the sine, which is 1 over square root of 2, so that is the square root of 2. The secant of 45 degrees is the reciprocal of cosecant, which is 1 over square root of 2, so that's going to be the square root of 2. And the cotangent of 45 degrees is the reciprocal of 1, which is, well, 1. So there you go. We have all six trig functions of 30 degrees, of 60 degrees, and of 45 degrees. These are, they're frequently referred to as the special angles. And uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of these in the future. Okay? See you in the next video. Bye-bye.